principals and district leaders. We should be using, not should, we must, we need to, we can use data to inform instruction. If you believe that your teachers are in the classroom and not using data to inform instruction, you're wrong. And if they're not, then they're just teaching, they're stand and deliver and students aren't having conversations about what they've learned. Data can be quantitative or qualitative. When students are talking to each other, that's a qualitative piece of information. You can hear what they're talking about. We call that expert noticing. And that information comes straight from Hattie's work with visible learning. When you're walking the classroom, you're listening to what they have to say. When principals walk around and they look at student engagement, that's a qualitative piece of data. The data that you receive from the state, my state, California, or any state in the United States, you get a one-time snapshot, snapshot each year for state data. You can look at it as summative or formative. I'm going to say it's both. Yes, it's a moment in time. It's a summary of how they did that year, but it can inform what you do throughout the year, especially when it comes to individual student data and teacher data. And it also can tell you uh, where the gaps are. I want to and am going to jump into the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress and show you something you may or may not know. You can do this in any state with the state data or your current data. I also want to caution you, I am going to be going into ChatGPT, so I'm not going to be using one-to-one -one student data. I'm going to use public data so I can show you how you can analyze and look at data. I'm going to tell you how, how I would analyze it, and then I'm going to show you what ChatGPT can do for you as well. The data that you see in front of you is the State of California Smarter Balance Assessment data, also known as the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress. The last uh, data, moment in time that we data we received was in 2022-23. You can look at previous years. This data, if no student group or um, districts took the test that year, I think you could have, but most didn't. And then, um, then we have the 2021-22 school year, and you can apply any of those years. But again, caution because you know coronavirus, and not all students took the test. But let me show you something. If I were a site principal or a district leader, the first thing I'm going to do is look at how many students met or exceeded in this area. I'm also going to look at how many students didn't, meaning not met or nearly met. There is this assumption that we can look at student data, specifically um, a group of students that are close to the next band, like from level two to level three, but the truth is, is that this data, um, when you look at individual student data, you have to question yourself and say, oh, it's the students that are closest that I want to move up. But we moved away from that with the status, the previous state assessment. You remember that CST, the California Standardized Test? They're all standardized assessments, but when we look at a student's data piece, maybe from third to fourth grade, every student can move to a new band or move their scale score up or forward. That's what I want you to think about. I want you to forget about that old language bubble students, meaning they're on the bubble or the cusp of moving forward. So that's how I'm looking at it. I'm also looking at individual student groups, whether or not they have a disability. Um, again, you have to apply it because it'll tell us. This gives me information. Um, I may look at their English fluency um, in the state of California, whether they are English learners enrolled in um, ELs enrolled 12 months or more, 12 months or less, English only, and compare those student groups. And then again, you can look at race, parent education. So as a site leader, I'm looking at this data. I'm going to tell you something that you can do. Now, maybe parents may not like this, but it's good data. We have found that um, depending on the data group for parent education, that students with um, parents that either don't have a high school diploma or a low income tend to not do as well. Well, the data is showing us that because if I go to a college graduate, a parent that have at least one parent that graduated from college, you can see there is a huge discrepancy. That knowledge helps us with our students who come into us at say kindergarten. What can I do differently with this student group, for example? 
And then there are some other areas that I want to show you. And it's down here, view ELA and math in, um, data. And this data gives you the claims. So what I'd like you to do right now is pause. And I want you to go and find your school site here or your district. You can do that by just Googling CASP results or whatever your state is. So take a moment, pause, and look at your student data. Now that you're back, what I would like you to do next is to look at both ELA and mathematics from a different perspective. I want you to go to view ELA detailed results. In the state of California, we can look at this um, by grade level from a whole scope instead of just having to um, do a drop down. We also can look at the um, achievement level descriptors. If I click on that, it gives me the rubric for the ELA and the mathematics um, achievement level descriptors. And then I can look at the English language arts scale score ranges. This is good information. And the reason why is because we want all of our students to be in this level, the standard met or exceeded in both in ELA and math. Now, if you scroll a little bit, it gives you percentages, again, just like the very first page. The only difference is you can see it all at once. But here's what I want to show you. These are the four claims. And these four claims give us a nice range of how students are doing in reading, writing, listening, research, and inquiry. How can you, at your school site, use these claims to have a conversation with teachers? And I'm going to tell you what you can do. Principals, you can do this with your teachers. Teachers, you can do the same thing with your students especially at the beginning of the school year, whether you have data or not. You see these questions? Each claim, whether it's ELA or whether it's mathematics, has a question attached to it. I also want to point out that problem solving and modeling and data analysis, there are four claims in math. However, the CAS puts, it, puts these two claims together. So there's one question. What you can do is you can get huge whiteboard um, or white paper, or you can do this in a Google presentation with a bunch of slides, or you can do a jam board or a Padlet. I'm just going to show you what it looks like in Canva. And you could grab this and you could do one uh, slide and put the actual, at the very top, you can just put the question, for example. And you're going to ask teachers how well do students understand stories and information that they read? If, you, if these were students in the classroom, how well do you understand stories and information when you read? Open-ended question. They can talk about it with each other. They can go up to the, they can use the Padlet. They can go up to the sheet of paper. They can write it. They can start to ask questions. You can keep adding some questions to this as well. I did the same for the mathematics. Here's what you can do if you are thinking of chat GPT. I'm gonna flip your minds a little bit because these are ideas that I would have had conversations with as a principal. I use this data to have conversations with um, school site teachers. So here's what you can do. We're gonna grab the state data for mathematics based on the concepts and procedures. I'm just gonna highlight it. I'm going to select Control C, Command C if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to go to ChatGPT. I'm going to ask ChatGPT, use the following data from the state CASP. These are the claims for mathematics. Create a professional development plan for teachers at a school site delivered from the site principal. Here is the data. Now I'm gonna put it in quotes so that I can see where I put it because sometimes I'm like, where did I put it? Where's the data? I'm also going to say, focus on the questions 
attached to each claim. Do you understand? It knows it when it's not spelled right. Let's see what happens. Now I know it's moving. If I click the down arrow, it'll continue to move. Professional development and plan objective teachers abilities to effectively teach and improve student outcomes in the areas of, here are the areas. Give me all four claims, even though it added problem solving and modeling data analysis together. Teacher audience, grade three through 11. So depending on your school site, it might look a little bit differently. Gives you an idea. Instruction of the CAS data analysis, concepts and procedures, strategies for teaching mathematical practices, mathematical concepts. Now, that's a, you should know the last three claims, aside from concepts and procedures, are not state standards. They are the mathematical practices. That's another video. It's coming soon. And it talks about this. Now, what I'm going to say is how, give me, give me a strategy using just the questions for a PV conversation. Let's see if it does it. So here we go. So it's giving me an outline. You can use this data or this presentation to come up with an idea. You might know that you would do this totally different, but it's giving you an outline. Um, create something that is more interactive. They are moving around. Now, I, and I didn't really look at this very well, but or in depth, but principal prepare a presentation or handout. I don't know that I want that. Prior to meeting, teachers reflect on students' performance. Nope, I would want to do that there. Um, no prior work needed. So again, it's moving. Gallery walk, that's better. Very similar to what I was thinking. If you want to improve what's happening in the classroom, and I know the state assessment is an outcome, we all get worked up over it, but it's information that we can use. And sometimes we think, oh, the teacher next to us is doing so much better, I could never, it's not about the other teacher, it's about what are you gonna do with your students that you have this year? Answering those questions and checking for understanding, because sometimes you can stand and deliver, and it is a beautiful lesson because you know it so well. The question I would ask you is how do you know that those students learn the concept and can use it in a new situation or at least have a dialogue and share it with another student in the classroom? Because then it's going into their long-term memory. And these questions as uh, can give you a guide to what you need to do in the classroom. And yes, there are so many other things that we can talk about using Hattie's work and those three uh, questions. What are you learning? Why are you learning it? And how do you know? that the students have learned it. I would even argue principals asking teachers, what did you teach? How do you know that students learned what you taught? And how do you know that they're going to be able to demonstrate this in a different situation? If you haven't read Visible Learning, it's there. These same concepts are in the Teacher's Guide for the State of California. And that's something that um, I used when I was a principal and we just started that clarity for learning and really looking at the efficacy, the collective efficacy of a school site. Tell me what you're doing. Please, thank you for the subscription and comment. I'm excited to know what you're doing as a principal. And you, and first and foremost, you really have to love what you're doing as a principal. Love it. And helping those teachers love it is our job as leaders. So thank you so much for watching.